Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. The Aegis Dynamics Saber Fighter is on concept sale until the 19th of October for $170 excluding taxes. It will come with LTI or lifetime insurance as well as two pieces of hangar flare during this sale. And it also comes with a VFG industrial or asteroid hangar. Part of Aegis Dynamics Phase 2 of new ship models, the Sabre was designed as a space superiority fighter for those situations where you need to leave a lighter footprint. While no one will deny the Hornet's place as the UEE Navy's brawler, the Sabre offers an elegant and nimble alternative to handle an ever-evolving combat landscape. Designed to be a rapid responder, the Sabre is more than capable of establishing battlefield dominance for any number of combat sorties. Engineers looked equally to the past and the future to build the Sabre, incorporating Aegis's battle-tested power distribution systems in their dependable ship hull construction while developing cutting-edge flight system technology. The Sabre is truly a next-generation fighter that represents the new Aegis. Aegis has designed the Sabre in response to the UEE Navy's request for a next generation fighter capable of outmatching the Vandal Stinger class heavy fighter in speed and turning. While the Navy has not accepted the Sabre bid, Aegis has opted to make a production of prototypes available to licensed civilian operators. This is the first ship I've seen that I would identify as a proper anti-fighter space superiority fighter and is my favorite sounding and looking one pilot one seat ship it's built to combat the stinger and the super hornet and the hornet series in general and close the distance between ships quickly if the super hornet is a brawler then the saber is a ninja stats wise it's 26 meters in length and 24 meters wide when its wings are folded back for landing they can extend to up to 30 meters when deployed it's also 3.8 meters tall so it has a larger cross-section profile from the top when compared to a hornet but a smaller one overall when compared to the front so if it's coming at you then it's going to be harder to hit than a hornet but if you're, you get the drop on it, you come from the top of it, you're going to be able to have an easier time hitting it and dealing damage. They also take up less space than a cutlass when landed. So, for example, in the Endeavour's hangar bay, you could have fit two of these at least, possibly even three at a push. But they are a bit larger than the Hornet in terms of taking up hangar space. Engine-wise, it's powered by two TR3 engines and has a 18,000 kilogram mass. So it weighs a little more than the Gladius uh, and has much more powerful engines. I would expect this ship to be pretty damn fast. I'm thinking in the region of 240 to 260 kind of range. It also has eight TR2 thrusters and two TR3 retro thrusters. So with its twin engine setup and thrusters, it's going to be a very maneuverable ship too. Shield wise, it has four light shields and three light power plants. With the new system is that isn't in the game yet, it's hard to judge how effective this will be compared to other ships. But the spirit of the ship is that it should have less shield and I presume a bit less power, at least in terms of power plant, than a Super Hornet. The ship has room for four size three weapons, two on the nose and then two on its wings. The weapon placement could allow for more accurate sniping and hit scoring as well, as they're all near the front and centre of the ship. Stock, it comes with two size three panther laser repeaters on its nose and two size two gimbaled laser weapons on its wings. I couldn't tell if these uh, laser weapons are Omni Skies, badges or M3As though, but as with all of the stock loadouts, you're likely to change them pretty quickly anyway to suit your needs. And let's not forget the two size 2 pylon mounts accommodating six size 2 missiles. That is extremely powerful. All of those weapons together, very, very powerful fighter. To me, this ship looks like a mini vanguard and that's what a lot of people are calling it. But if anything, stats wise, it should be more called the Super Gladius. Fast, maneuverable, a lot of firepower potential and stacks of missiles. It's going to be less armoured and less shielded than a Hornet though, but for me, speed, agility, targeted firepower trump toughness any day.
We were told it was going to be more stealthy than the Hornet. So obviously there's the Hornet Ghost too. And I would expect the Hornet Ghost to actually be a, a more stealthy ship. Uh, it's going to be very hard to detect that ghost with its void armour. Whereas the Sabre is probably just less obvious than other fighters in terms of general signatures and cross-section. It will almost certainly get some good stealth equipment options uh, that you can purchase separately for those inclined. So is it worth getting one? I prefer this even to the Super Hornet for dogfighting. It does lose that extra seat, but as a single person fighter, this could well be top dog in dogfighting, at least on paper or in spirit anyway. Its speed and the skill of the pilot will be a major determining factor in its survivability, as it can't rely on its toughness and shields as much as a Hornet can. That said, I doubt it's a glass cannon though. I would expect uh, fighters, pilots to eventually all have one of these in the verse. It looks beautiful too. So that's a good thing. <laughs> and I'm even considering melting my Vanguard for one of these as I wanted a single pilot top dog combat ship. It's looks, speed, weapon placement and options all make it very appealing for raw combat. And if you wanted to pick one of these up, you could even upgrade from your current ship to the Sabre if you have an existing ship with the new CCU system. CCU being cross chassis upgrade. The ship doesn't require any new mechanics or special additions to make it flyable either. So in a mechanical sense of when it's gonna be ready, uh, it will be usable in Arena Commander much earlier than most combat ships. Anyway guys, I hope that was informative. As with all of these concept and ship sales, you can get everything in the verse without having to spend real monies. All you need is a starter pack and a game package, which you can get for around $45 for pretty much everything. You can also rent all this stuff with rec, rent and equipment credits, in Arena Commander currently. Um, and you can just get that now just by playing. Moreover, LTI or lifetime insurance is just a peace of mind perk. It's not that important at all. You can purchase insurance in game for any of your ships for a very nominal fee. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help me and I will see you in the verse.